Hi, my name is Tony Santo, and in this video I'm going to show you my preferred method for developing black and white film. I'll be covering briefly tray processing and tank processing on or off processors like the Jobo. In some ways, developing black and white film is a little bit more challenging than color film. Not because of the steps involved or the chemicals involved, but simply because of all the choices that are available. It's very, very difficult to decide what developer you're going to use, what fixer you're going to use, what combination of those two are going to get you the results that you're looking for. And my philosophy is just to keep it simple. So my preferred uh, developer is HC110. I like this developer because it comes in a concentrate form that lasts for years and years and years. This is one that I purchased um, I'm not really sure how long ago it's been, but I can tell you that the expiration date on the bottle says 10, 2017. And in this video, you're going to see me develop uh, a whole stack of film with this developer. And it turned out just fine. So, you know, you can pick whatever developer that you're interested in, but the reason why that I like this one the best is because it is in this concentrate form and it lasts for a really long time and it doesn't require uh, anything other than water for a stop bath, which is a plus. That's one less chemical that you have to invest money into and expose yourself to. So I really like HC110 for that. And quite honestly, the differences among all of the developers are subtle enough, at least to me they are, that I'm not really interested in playing around with, can this one give me a little bit more contrast or less contrast? Uh, there are so many steps along the way where you can add or remove contrast in black and white film developing and then of course in post-processing post whether you're doing that digitally in Photoshop or whether you're actually printing in the darkroom. So I'm not really too concerned about that. So I keep it simple when it comes to my developers. Again, like I said, the stop bath that I use is water. So I don't even bother with the uh, use of chemicals with that step the water is just fine to stop the action of the developer. The, the fixer that, that I use uh, is this uh, photographer's formulary. It's the, uh, the TF4 archival uh, rapid fixer. I've just been using it for so long that I'm used to it. I have my ratios written on my containers that I mix up my working tank solutions in. So it's just a matter of convenience. There's really no other reason than uh, my familiarity with this fixer that I'm picking this fixer. It's, it's really easy to mix up and it lasts again for a really long time. The only thing that you have to do occasionally is just uh, mix it up real well because it does settle and separate. Uh, and then for the last step here, the photo flow, uh, that's the only other chemical that you need to purchase. Uh, this is just to ensure that you don't get any water marks. And this stuff lasts really forever too. I've had this bottle for uh, probably a good decade now uh, and it still has just a little bit left. So I'm almost done with it. Let's talk PPE. This is really important because I want you to be safe. And although black and white chemistry is not as harmful as color chemistry is, you still want to take some precautions. At the very least, you should be protecting your skin with some rubber gloves, wearing long clothing, long pants, lab coat, if that's what you prefer to use, some eyewear protection, and maybe even do a combination of eyewear and face shield. Uh, as far as air quality is concerned, I would advise you to do this in an area where there's plenty of ventilation in the room, especially with fixer, if that's exposed to the open air, it can fill up the, uh, the room very, very quickly. So you can use like a, a respirator like this one uh, that will help protect you uh, or do it in a, in a place that basically has a lot of ventilation. So uh, bottom line here is just take some precautions to protect yourself. If you watch my other developing videos, you know that I'm a big fan of using these composition books to keep track of your data. The main thing that I would emphasize with black and white photography is that since there are so many different film types and the developing times can range based on the temperature, that it's just nice that if you're a regular shooter of, let's say, Kodak T-Max 
400 or Ilford Delta 100, then you can just look up that information really, really quickly instead of having to figure out, well, what dilution did I use the last time? And what time am I supposed to use? What's the temperature that I'm developing at? So you can keep it all in one place. Some of the supplies that you might consider having on hand include some containers to put your chemistry in. I just use these old distilled water containers and I label them with the respective chemical and I even put how to mix them up at several different concentrations on the bottle to make it easy. You'll also want to have some sort of measuring device. I have a lot of these uh, on hand that really are great for measuring the larger quantities but to get more specific and only do small batches of chemistry I've got this smaller one that does down to the half an ounce which is really really convenient. You'll want to have some sort of timekeeping device obviously it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're comfortable using it. You'll want to have a thermometer to measure the temperature of your chemistry. That's really important, especially for the developer stage because that has to be at a specific temperature and then you have to adjust the developing time if it's not at the correct temperature. So that's important to have, otherwise you'll have no idea how long to develop the film for. You'll also might want to consider some cups, especially if you're using a Jobo processor for your water washes to keep track of where you are in the water washing process. And I also have this tray here that I use for my sheet film so that I can put my rinse aid in, but I also use it when I put my film in the rinse aid in the measuring cup to catch any spills that come out of the measuring cup. Especially with roll film, it's kind of finicky to get it in there and then pulling it out, it kind of splatters everywhere and makes a mess. There are five steps to developing black and white film, the first of which being the developer, which converts the latent image into a visible image by reducing silver halides into a silver metal, followed by a stop bath that stops the action of the developer, followed by a fixer, which permanently affixes the emulsion so that you have an image that you can see, and also removes all of the unexposed silver halide crystals, followed by water washes, and then followed by a rinse aid like PhotoFlow. To dilute my concentrates, I'm going to use distilled water that I picked up inexpensively at my local grocery store. The reason why I want to use this over tap water is because if there are any impurities in the water, they may adversely react with my chemistry, and so I don't want that affecting my development process and negatively uh, affecting the way that the film turns out. So the easiest way to minimize that risk is simply to use distilled water. To mix up my developer, I'm going to follow the formula that I've written on the bottle here. I want to mix up 3,000 milliliters because I do have a lot of film to develop. So in order to do that, I need 93 ounces of water and 3 ounces of developer. So I'm going to go ahead and put my water in the jug. So I need 93 ounces. I'm going to go ahead and get that going. I'm going to use my measuring cup and pour until I get to my mark. And there's one. That's 36 ounces. So I'm going to put that into the jug. I need another full one of these and then plus 21 ounces. And let's fill another 36 ounces here. Now I need 21 ounces. There's 20 ounces to get that last ounce. I'm going to use a smaller measuring cup. So for the developer, I need 3 ounces. Exactly what I need. I'm going to go ahead and pour that into my jug. And what I like to do is rinse my cup with the solution that I've just created to make sure that I get everything out of the measuring cup. Get all that developer out there and it takes usually two or three times in order to really clean it out just a little bit this time. And we'll swirl and then we'll pour that right in and maybe one more time we'll get the remainder of that developer in there out. Now I'll just invert it gently, 
just to mix that chemistry up really well. To prepare the fixer, what I'm going to do is use a 1 to 3 dilution, and since I have so much film to develop, I'm going to make about 950 mLs of this stuff. So I'm going to use 8 ounces of fixer and 24 ounces of distilled water. So I'm going to go ahead, I already measured it, I'm going to pour it into the jug here, that's the distilled water that's going in right now. Okay, and then the next thing I have to do is I'm using this photographer's formulary that needs to be shaken periodically because it does settle. So I'm just going to give that a quick shake there and measure out 8 ounces of fixer. I'm going to pour out a little bit and swirl it around very gently and then put that back into the jug. Okay, and then I'm just going to invert the container, mix it properly, and give it a swirl. I already have some photo flow prepared, so I don't need to mix any additional amount because photo flow can be reused. So I'll reclaim it when I'm developing, put it back in the bottle, and then use it for my next run. For mixing, I use a 1 to 200 dilution, uh, and usually I mix the entire jug, and I uh, prepare it by taking 5 mLs of photo flow, it's a really small amount, and mixing that with 1,000 milliliters of distilled water. Normal processing times for black and white film vary according to the types of chemical used, dilution of the developer, solution temperature, film size, film emulsion, ISO the film, and type of processing used. I recommend consulting the film and chemical data sheets for specifics on your setup as a starting point. You may also wish to consider the massive dev chart on digitaltruth.com, which has a plethora of film slash developer combinations and respective processing times. These are the processing times I adhere to for two of my favorite film stocks. 8C Developer, 6 minutes for Ilford Delta 100, and 5 minutes 30 seconds for Kodak T-Max 400. Stop bath for 1 minute. TF4 Fixer for 5 minutes for Ilford Delta 100, and 6 minutes for Kodak T-Max 400. For the water washes, I lay out 10 cups and wash the film for 30 seconds per cup of water. For the wetting agent, I complete this either in a tray for sheet film or my measuring cup for roll film for one minute. An important tip regarding developing times is that all of the steps, except for the developer, won't be adversely affected if you go over in time because the action of the chemical goes to completion. That is, the effect of that chemical will no longer result in further reaction with the emulsion once the chemical reaction is complete. So if you go over in time by a few minutes, your film will be perfectly fine. Just remember, this tip does not apply to the developer. It's important to note that once diluted, many developers are designed for one-shot processing. That is, the developer is used only once and then discarded. Dilution B shown in this video is weak, and when used in small quantities, it exhausts the potency of the chemical regardless of which technique you choose to use. I do not recommend reusing it. When I first started developing sheet film, I'd use a system of trays like you see in front of me here. My first tray was filled with just plain old water for my pre-wash. My second tray had developer, a stop bath in this tray, a fixer in this tray, and in the last tray I would do a combination. So I'd start off water washing the film in this tray and then add the uh, rinse aid afterwards. And this obviously has to be done in complete darkness, so the room that you are doing this in, you want to make sure there aren't any stray beams of light coming into your, uh, into your room and potentially fogging your film. So what I thought I'd do was just take some film that didn't make it into the, uh, the cut of quality images, as you can see, as uh, some of these are blank and not properly developed. So what I would do if you're doing tray processing is I would take the emulsion side and put that down, put it right into the tray, and I'm just using water for this example. You should be wearing gloves if you're going to do this with chemistry. And then I would just continually add the number of pieces of film to the tray. And you got to keep in mind that 
because you have to constantly agitate as I'm going to show you here so I'll pick up the very first image that I placed into the tray and then I'm going to pull up very carefully and then continually rotate through each of these images so that there's fresh chemistry being passed along each of the images. Now I put the emulsion side down for a reason and the reason why I did that is because when you pull up on the film it is passing other film pieces over on the non-emulsion side. When you start to do a pre-wash and you start to soften up the emulsion and then you increase the softness as you go through each of the chemical steps that can cause the emulsion to be very fragile and you can easily tear it. If you put the emulsion side up then you're running the risk of tearing the emulsion on the edge of the film when you come up. So I prefer to do it emulsion side down. That's how I was taught when I was taking photography classes at Appalachian State University. So you would just continually do this agitating the film. There's no rush to doing this. You know, nice and easy, just taking your time, making sure that you're not damaging the film, and just continually passing the film through that particular chemical. So you would obviously have a timer that you'd need set up, and of course, no digital timer is going to be acceptable here because of the bright lights. You're going to have to go with a mechanical timer uh, or one of those old clock timers that don't have a, a light to them. Uh, once you're done with each step, you just continually move on to the next tray all the way down the line. And once you get to the fixer stage, uh, after it's been in the uh, fixer for a minute or two, you can actually turn on the lights if you wish. Wish um, I usually didn't do that. I just kept the lights off until I got to the water washes just to be safe. But you can uh, open up the uh, or turn on the lights at the fixer stage of the game. And then I would wash the film for the uh, proper amount of time, throw that water out, and then put my rinse aid in and allow the film to be in the rinse aid for the proper amount of time. When it comes to developing tanks, there are numerous options available on the market, both used as well as new products. There are the classic Patterson tanks, which I don't have shown here. You've got Jobo tanks that can do uh, roll film as well as sheet film. And there are also other versions of sheet film developers like this one here. I have to thank my friend Mike for uh, giving this one to me. This one does 4x5 uh, sheet film as well as some smaller sizes that uh, may not be available on the market right now. Um, there's also this roller base that you can use uh, as an alternative to using the inversion method. Typically what you would do with classic film developing is you would load your film onto the reels whether it's 120 or 35 millimeter film in total darkness of course you'd be doing that part of it uh, and then closing the lid putting your chemistry in and you would invert the tank over and over again for the entire development time occasionally every 30 seconds or so tapping the container on the countertop to release any of the air bubbles that might be trapped on the film which could prevent the developer from uh, developing the film properly now as far as this uh, roller base is concerned, this is kind of an interesting alternative to uh, the inversion method which you would use with uh, your classic Patterson tank or something like this uh, sheet film tank. And that is you would just take your, your drum and you would agitate the film by rolling it back and forth. So you would do this for the entire period of developing. So when it comes to these tanks, as far as what you should consider getting, it's really up to you and how you want to work and what type of film that you're using and processing. So I would encourage you to take a look at all the options and then think about what fits best with the type of photography that you're doing, uh, as well as the size of the film, and then uh, looking at some of the advantages and disadvantages to each of the tanks. So the options are numerous and sometimes that can be the most challenging part is figuring out uh, what you want to do but at the end of the day they all basically do the same thing and that is they develop your film. You just got to choose your method of preference is what it boils down to. So if you have access to a rotary processor like the Jobo that does make the film processing 
a little bit easier. It's, it's convenience basically is what you get out of this. It controls the temperature for you, which with black and white chemistry, it's not so much of an issue with color film. Um, it is more of a problem and the Jobo really makes it easy to maintain the proper temperature. Uh, but the other thing that this thing does is that it maintains consistent agitation of the, the chemistry so that you're getting proper development of the film. This is a machine that's not necessary. Obviously you can do tray processing, you can do the uh, Patterson tank uh, processing. So this is really a luxury item when it comes to black and white uh, film photography developing. So if you have access to it like I do, you might want to consider using it. Uh, this is really honestly my main form of processing. I use this machine because I've invested in it. Uh, but don't feel like it's something that you absolutely have to have to develop your film. Be sure to adjust the drum's water bath to the appropriate level based on the drum you use. Please consult your Jobo's operating manual for further detail. Jobo produced many different developing tanks over the years. These are the ones that I own and the minimum amount of chemistry needed to properly develop the film. So my next up is to put my chemistry into my Jobo bottles. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And for this, I'm not measuring this out because I know that these bottles are about 1,000 milliliters. And so that's about the max that the Jobo Expert drum will take for developing 8x10 sheet film. And for the fixer, I'm going to reclaim it and continue to use it. Place the Jobo bottles into the water bath and allow ample time for the chemistry to reach 20 degrees Celsius. In order to use the expert drum, you've got to switch from the bottom spout to the top spout. So I'm just going to flip that up and put my Jobo drum on the Jobo, and then we'll start the rotation. And since this is an expert drum, I'm using rotation speed four. After loading film into the tank, I begin the process with an optional water pre-soak step on the processor for five minutes. This accelerates saturation of the emulsion by the developer and promotes more even development. Once the Jobo reaches the proper temperature, the development process is simple. It's just a matter of pouring your chemicals into the Jobo tank, processing each step for the amount of time shown earlier, and dumping out your used chemistry for disposal according to your local regulations. So this is the last water wash, and I'm going to keep that last water wash in the tank so that it makes it a little bit easier to pop the lid open. Not only have air pressure, but having some fluid in there kind of makes it like a hydraulic lift to push up the lid when I open it. So I'm just going to turn off the motor and then pop the drum off of the uh, Jobo and let it drain. I'm going to put the uh, drum on that little table. I'm going to get my pump. And now, it's just a matter of popping the lid open. There we go. That was really easy. And the moment of truth. Let's see if there's anything on them. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. Perfect. The fun part is opening up the drums to see the results. As I mentioned earlier, depending upon the size of the negative, I use a tray or a measuring cup to place the film in the wetting agent. If you do this in your drums, it can lead to an accumulation of stabilizer gunk, which will make it difficult to load your film and also results in cross-contamination in your chemistry. This accumulation of stabilizer gunk is not easily washed out. The last step is to hang your film to dry for about two hours, depending upon your environmental conditions. While the film is drying, I like to touch the very edge of my sheet film with a lint-free towel to remove the water droplet that accumulates. Well, if you've enjoyed this video and found some useful tips, please consider leaving comments below. Maybe you've got a useful developing tip that you can share with all of us. Give it the old thumbs up if you like it. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel and maybe even donate a dollar or two to keep this channel going and so that I can keep producing content that you enjoy. As always, thanks for watching.